Hey, one thought, here with 11.56 under control with our amazing robot Viper in the Newton division. With their amazing over the bumper intake, full width of the robot as well, and their pivoting shooter as well. I'm really excited to talk with, their, with them about, about their amazing robot. Here with Matos, Bruno, and Luca. Really excited to walk down with their amazing robot here in, in the Newton division on behind the bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Marcellus, talk to me about your drivetrain and what you guys are using. Seems like Kraken and Neo, but talk yeah. about your process. So this is our drivetrain. This year we are using MK4s with Krakens and also we are using 3D printed wheels. You can show it. So we chose the 3D printed wheels because last year we did a lot of tests doing with coefficient that tricked and etc. And this, this wheel right here it has spikes. So it gets like 50% more tricked with the ground than the SDS original ones. So another cool design that we made some modification is that we have this little tube right here that has one inch, one inches, uh, which, so the robot gets like 0.6 inches from the ground. So it's really lower. You can see right now, I can't like, I can't put my hands on the ground. And also as the robot is very small, we did a lot of things things to improve, improve the electrical. So here we have some 3D printed parts that improve the spark mounted. So here we have the sparks mounted on this, uh, this 3D printed support. And also this protects the gears of the SDS swerves drives and possibility us to lubricate and do everything of maintenance. We just can put this thing out and we can maintenance to take off some, some grease that is extra and also uses a lot of 3D printed parts on the rest of the robots. So you can see that right here, we have the Limelight 2 Plus supported by uh, a lot of 3D printed parts. And we, do, we did a 2D analysis with the fourth of this camera. We just take the horizontal fourth of the camera and put in the CAD. And we see that, the, oh, this is the best position for this camera. And that, we did that same thing with the, another camera, the air to cam. We see on the CAD what, where is the best position to it. So here uh, he doesn't see the climber, but he will see the April tags and he are using a dump truck. So, so now let's walk through your intake. Bruno, talk to me about your intake mechanism. Seems like it's a, an entire width of your robot, but explain your design process with that. Uh, yeah, uh, we started the season thinking about how we can uh, maximize the collecting area for the notes. Uh, we actually did a lot of uh, analysis because our MK4 uh, swerve drives, uh, we were afraid of the, we cannot use a pivot to uh, catch the note on the ground. So after we saw that it's actually possible to maximize our range, we did this very large intake that goes to uh, to the ground. I don't know Carvalho can show the intake working. So yeah, now the intake is outside of the robot and he can collect the notes pretty easy. We have this funnel uh, ramp here, a funnel size ramp made of polycarbonate and it's it's really resistant for the impacts that we're gonna have. We focus a lot on the make the, strength, the intake the strongest as possible. We add this five for a uh, aluminum uh, shaft to protect from crashes uh, on the field and to other robots. We also use these TPU rollers here to help catch the nodes uh, sideways. So when we go you know, swerving or go a little uh, unaligned, we can actually catch the notes pretty easy with those. Uh, we have uh, the motors inside of the robot. We don't have any kind of electronics outside the robot when you are collecting. Here we have our pivot one. It's a new mo motor powered uh, a 72 gear ratio. And in that way, we have another Neo with a three for one uh, ratio as well. Uh, we can show collecting. 
So here we can see collecting from sideways. It's pretty easy to catch. We have those little uh, arc uh, design, so the node can go in pretty easy and go to this T uh, TFP uh, tape right here we use. So it has less accurate with the nodes than the polycarbonate have. We also have this on our shooter that I think Mateus can explain better about it. Yeah. Before we uh, move on to Mateus about the shooter, whenever your your intake is so wide, do you have any issues with like picking up two notes on accident, or have you guys been pretty accurate with picking up one note? Uh, yeah. When the notes are stacked uh, one above each other, we have the uh, little uh, difficult with get out one of those, but. In our shooter only has a capability of having one node, so the other is stuck on our intake. So the driver has a button that can shoot the nodes uh, above the intake and it drops on the ground pretty easy. Nice. Now, Mateus, talk me about your, your shooter that you have. You saw a bit of a pivot over there. Talk me about your shooter. Yeah, of course. So, it was just so much to explain uh, the design that we choose. This year we are choosing, uh, we choose two inches wheels. We saw a lot of teams using four inches, but we want to be the best amp of the robot possible. So we want to be the shooter, be lighter. So with the two inches wheels, it's very light. And another thing, it's the low CG of the robot. As you can see, the motor, the motors of the shooter is up down. So. Uh, when the robot is like this, it's a safe position, the motors will be down, so the CG is very low. And also another thing, that this year we are using 3D printed pulleys, but with polycarbonate. On the Brazil Regional, we saw that these pulleys are breaking, or breaking, so we trade to polycarbonate pulleys. And also, uh, the note, uh, pass through here, so we use this compliant wheel so uh, the node can get more sticky to the shooter and we use some uh, infrared, some retro reflective uh, tapes so it gets more precision when it comes to collect the node. Uh, another thing that we have on this shooter is this Teflon tapes right, right here. So you can see that it's very sleepy. The, the note doesn't get stuck inside of it. It's very simple to just pass through the shooter. And also, we are using some pockets uh, on this plate. So all the mechanism is rigid than using this old version that we have right here. You see that it's holes of all of the plate. So this is, doesn't get rigid. With that, you can get the, the rigid as possible. Uh, so, now talking about the pivot, you're using a new right here with a gear rate of 113 to 1. So, it's very fast, but it's very strong as too. So, one thing that we did for doesn't get loose, uh, we tape, we, we have a trim tape right here. It's an aluminum tape. So we put inside of the sprocket, so it's, it sticks uh, on the on the on the shaft. So it's got really tied up. Another thing is the shaft inside of the pivot is an aluminum shaft. Uses a one diameter, a one inch diameter. So it's really big, and it doesn't get like flexibility and you get more rigid than using some small shafts. Uh, another cool thing on the tower, that all of the things are supported on the tower. So the new radio that you can see right here, uh, on the specs they said, oh, you can put on the aluminum tower, on a aluminum thing, that will be better connection with the field. Uh, so we put in the tower, so it gets like transmitted with the, the aluminum right here, and it's the, 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 the heat, and get more connection, better connections with the fuel. Uh, you can see right here that we have the the 3G right here, and it's spotted on the arm right uh, again. 
and also the orange pie supported and 3D printed. And also one cool thing that we here we did on this pivot is that you can see that right here the thickness is a quarter inches and right here is eight millimeters. So we just have a thickness material when you, where you need. Now, are we able to see this entire pivoted system and the shooter uh, run? Yeah, of course. And I assume that's your amp position? Yeah. And what about your speaker position? Now finally, hand it off to back to Bruno. Talk me about your climber that you have. Seems like it's double-sided. Talk me about this uh, system that you have. Uh, yeah, we focus a lot on have the small robot as possible. So we focus on have uh, one side climber that has two stages to go up. And we focus a lot also and get the higher point on the chain from the stage and climb with another person. We didn't focus on the trap or long climb at all. Uh, one cool thing about this climber is it's fixed uh, perfectly between the modules and the intake that we have. Uh, it also uses a right here on our pulley a truck uh, rope that goes up and down. We had some problems with uh, string ropes; they were cut inside of the tube because of the number of screws that we, bolts that we have. So you can see that our intake goes uh, goes down because in our robot when we climb before that the, it gets uh, crushed on the, uh, the stage. So we can see it's pretty high our climber and it goes pretty fast. We focus on having a pretty fast climber and goes on the five or two last seconds of the match and just climb to guarantee an RP and get the points that we need to be good at the qualifiers. Now, Luca, you, there's a bunch of programming involved with your robot. I see a couple of limelights, some custom vision system, sensors. Talk to me about the entire process that you guys have. Yeah, so we use odometry a lot. Uh, we, in, it was a progress because in the Brazil regional, we only use the two, two limelight two right here without odometry. Then we, in Iowa, we the limelight two was here on the 3G side. Um, in Iowa, we started using a geometry, and now for the championship, we have three cameras doing pose estimation. So each one of them was made an analysis in, on the FOV of, in the CAD, like Mateo said, and we use them to estimate our pose on the field. So. You, so you can see uh, on the our speaker shot, it was trying to on our speaker shot, it was trying to aim at the speaker. Uh, so it uses the odometry to to aim at it, and it also um, uses the odometry to fit over stage. We one of the main goals of us putting these cameras was to. Uh, increase our odometry precision on the other side of the field because it was really hard just with one camera use, uh, to estimate it. Um, also, we have a note vision system with this camera right here. Um, I believe I can show you guys the process on it, but it basically aims to the note and it aligns the robot with it. Uh, and we have this camera right here that detects the April tag on the amp, so then we can do a auto shoot when the robot is aligned with it. And what coprocessor and software are you using for your vision? Um, in this orange pie here, we are using the RDCam and those three cameras. We are using photo vision on it, uh, so we're using the yellow model for detecting the notes and the April track tracking on the other two cameras. Uh, on the limelights, we're using Limelight OS with Multitag 2 that released some, some weeks ago. And yeah. So how's it been using the, both of the softwares? Um, we can see that uh, the photo vision with one tag, it's kind of 
messed up a little bit, but on the programming we limit this area cam here to only see, only estimates the position when it sees two tags. So it has worked really well for us. We do an algorithm that search the one with the most tags. If the tags are re equal, it just gets the position from the one that is near to the tag that is detected. Well, 11.56 under control. Winners of the Brazil Regional. Congratulations on the great success you have so far this season. Good luck here in the Newton Division. Really excited to see you guys perform, and good luck you guys. Thank you. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.